Hello and welcome back into the next verse. My name is George, and if this is your first time here, or you haven't, and you've been before, but haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Hit that thumbs up button for me. Very much appreciate that. And drop your comments. All right, well, we are in the doggiest days of summer right now. And yet, there is still Nick's news. Things are starting to, it feels like the ice that has built up around the talks between Danny Ainge and Leon Rose have beginning to start to thaw. That's right. We're going to get to that. We're going to talk about the update on the Donovan Mitchell trade to New York, possibly. Uh, I'm even going to put out, because some, actually, I was thinking about a three-team trade, and someone tweeted, uh, uh, actually, I thought it was an excellent one, so we're going to highlight that. And we're also going to talk about what the latest news coming out of the Brooklyn Nets, how it impacts the NBA and the Knicks themselves. It's going to be interesting. So stay tuned and let's go. Here we go. Begins with Shams. So Shams, he actually, this was uh, yesterday on Monday. Uh, he tweeted this out. He tweeted an article out on, uh, well, he posted an article on, on The Athletic and he tweeted out also on Inside Pass, which is his, I guess it's his column on The Athletic, uh, Knicks and Jazz remain in discussions about a potential deal sending Donovan Mitchell to New York, including details from myself and uh, T. Jones on the NBA regarding a recent offer. All right, so we're going to get into this. Actually, let's just get to it. Let's just read this article. Uh, this the first couple of paragraphs, the latest on the Donovan Mitchell trade talks. Uh, Jazz and Knicks are in discussions on the trade that would send Donovan Mitchell to New York. According to sources, a deal is not considered eminent yet. That feels, it feels like they almost wanted to say it's eminent, but it's getting, it's not there yet, according to his sources. All right. <laughs> but the Knicks are motivated to acquire Mitchell and have proposed new packages to Utah's new front office, led by CEO Danny Ainge. New York made a recent offer of Evan Fournier, Obi Toppin, additional salary, and two unprotected first round picks. Five total, so that means the three protected ones that they got. League sources tell me and the Athletics' Tony Jones. The Jazz's asking price has been more significant than that. All right, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this for a second. First of all, it's the actual first time, I believe, it's the first time we've actually heard an, an actual real proposal. Uh, before it was like, you know, uh, you know, it's like X amount of picks and X amount of players, possibly interest in Grimes or RJ, you know, mix different variations of that, but nothing was concrete. Here, uh, Shams is putting it out there. This was the actual offer that recently the Knicks made. Now, is it the only offer? I don't think so. Because we know Woj said that there's a situation with different levers, depending on what you want in terms of picks and the type of picks you want. It impacts what kind of players we're going to include in the deal and vice versa. So there's probably several different scenarios out there, several, several proposals that Leon has made or that have been discussed, but that this one seems to be the one that's beginning to uh, reignite the talks. Let's put it this way. Or I, when the talks got reignited, this is how it, it, it ended up. Actually, uh, Berman is back as well. Good to see you, Berman. See you back. See, he tweeted out Donovan Mitchell trade talks rekindled. And in his article that he posted over the weekend, but here's why uh, Knicks are uh, wary of the Jazz offers. So I'm going to get into that as well. But let's get back to this thing here. So Fournier, Toppin, Additional salary and two unprotected first round picks. I can tell you from my feeling, my analysis and reading everything that there is to read about all of this. Also, one thing I just want to say, <laughs> we don't know. We don't even know if this was the real offer. This is just what got to him. We don't know, but they're still talking. That's the key. Or they, they've re-engaged the talks. That's very important. And it feels about right, because let me tell you, Donovan Mitchell has spent so much time in the New York area this summer, much more so than I could ever remember. Much more, and actually Berman, when he was on uh, KFTV, he talked about this. He said, 
Last year, he did like one one thing, one event. He's already done several. I mean, he's even thrown the ball out uh, at the, uh, the ballpark. Uh, he's played at uh, different uh, outdoor arenas. He's doing a lot of different... Uh, he, he's, he's, he's making himself a part of New York already, it feels like. So it does feel like he wants to be with the Knicks. That's That seems to be a given. But he's a class act. He's a professional uh, he, he knows he has three more years on his contract. He's not going to like demand the trade, but it does feel like he thinks he's going to end up in orange and blue. That's what it feels like right now. Now, so this offer here, I mean, Evan Fournier, we're talking about uh, the, the fifth uh, best, fourth or fifth best uh, three point shooter volume wise for definitely in the NBA and Obi Toppin. It's interesting that Obi Toppin is in here. Uh, there was also a report from uh, Ian Begley, uh, SNY, that the Jazz continue to have strong interest in Knicks wing uh, R.J. Barrett, per and, uh, SNY sources. Evan Fournier's name has also come up in discussions there. And the Jazz are seeking the multiple first-round picks that we talked about. Uh, and Utah would want at least one of the trio of Obi Toppin, Quinton Grimes, and Emmanuel Quickly in a trade if Barrett is included. So they want one of those other ones if but so see how see how like the situation i mean this is what the knicks offered and this is what they uh ian is hearing that the jazz are seeking so it seems like they have uh there's a gap there's a pretty big gap not i don't know how big the gap really is in actuality it's one thing when you start asking for something but sometimes you ask for something knowing that you're not going to get it but by asking, you're going to get something else in between. It's just negotiation. One thing we do, I do believe, one thing I do, do believe is Danny Ainge does want as many unprotected picks as possible. I do believe that. Two unprotected picks is probably not going to do it at the moment unless, uh, unless Danny just thinks he just can't do anything better anywhere else. So Leon Rose... And Danny Ainge are playing a game of spider chicken. <laughs> but, you know, they're, they're basically, who's going to blink first? Who's going to buckle? And at the moment, there's a couple things happening that uh, could impact all of this. And let's get into that here, as you can see here. So uh, Berman also, in an article today, praising, talking about uh, Rick Pitino's, uh, you know, love and the uh, fascination of uh, Donovan Mitchell and his hopes and dreams that he'll come and play for New York. Uh, let's see here. What did he say? Don, uh, Rick. I have that here. I do not have that here, but that's all right. Basically, he just said he's a, he's a tremendous work ethic. Uh, he has like a, a Kobe Bryant type desire to win, uh, which is a, you know one of the highest compliments. Uh, and Patino basically said that uh, he, I mean, it's, he really hopes that Donovan ends up with New York. So it's a good thing. But in that article, uh, Berman did drop this little uh, nugget here that uh, Danny Ainge is telling confidants two mysterious teams have made offers he likes for Donovan Mitchell. All right. Well, he likes, you know, you know, sometimes you like vanilla. You know, I'll take it. I mean, if it's at all, it's there. I'll take vanilla. It's not like I don't like vanilla, but come on. Vanilla is very few people's favorites. If you have the option of getting like, you know, peanut butter cup with chocolate ice cream mixed in and some marshmallows or a Rocky Road or something delicious like that, you're gonna get that. You're gonna go for vanilla. So likes is like the most lukewarm word of, <laughs> that could have been thrown in here. It's just purely <laughs> Danny trying to stir things up. Actually, <laughs> which actually reminds me of this funny uh, tweet, uh, that uh, who put this out? It was a really good one. Uh, oh, the, there's a, a tweet, a Twitter account uh, called Brock Aller. Actually, let's go to it. All right, so you can see <laughs> uh, this is great from the scene from uh, Moneyball. So I call this Danny Ball here. Uh, this is from Brock Aller. Uh, Leon, this is Danny Ainge. He got five picks for Rudy Gobert. The rest of the NBA knows it's an overpay and how Minnesota is on their own tier of desperation. He now wants more for Donovan Mitchell, but the whole league knows he's tearing it down and we're the only team with a solid offer. The best part is down below. His only flaw, 
is that he leaks to the media every day that there are other good offers on the table. Meanwhile, we all know Tyler Hero and plus Duncan Robinson is the Heat's version of THT and Kendrick Nunn. He also trades TPEs but doesn't ever use them. Love that. Great tweet. Great tweet. So that, but yeah, basically that's what it is. I mean, Danny is trying to make Leon overpay. Pay more than he wants to. What's happening here is Leon's offering two unprotected. Danny wants four. The players aren't really the big deal. That's and that also is what the main part of uh, uh, Berman's article was. That it's not doesn't the players themselves. Of course, there's some. I mean, Danny's going to want certain player over another player, but it's not the sticking point. The sticking point is the unprotected picks. If the and the reason the Knicks are holding firm on two unprotected, we only got four available for the next seven years uh, that we can trade. That we can trade. Yeah, that's correct. And then we have that we have eight picks total, but the four protected ones is because if we make this trade and another possible big name, a bigger name becomes available, let's say at the trade deadline or next summer, a year from now, the Knicks need to have those trade chips to make that trade happen. If they give up three or four to Danny, the, the unprotecteds now, what are they gonna have? They're gonna have no bullets left in the chamber. So in this scenario, there is one other possibility. It's getting a third unprotected pick from another team. So either it could be a three-team trade or it's a separate trade that the Knicks can make to acquire that unprotected pick. Easier said than done, that is for sure. In fact, I want us to look, well, let's go over here. Right, before we keep going to the, to the uh, trade proposal, we'll touch base on this. Uh, this was a nice week, and I actually watched this uh, uh, Tim McMahon on ESPN uh, talking about this. He was like, he made it seem like it's a, it's, it's, there's no question that Donovan Mitchell is going to end up with the Knicks. Uh, Tim McCann, uh, McManahan, Tim McManahan on ESPN telling it like it is on NBA Today regarding a Donovan Mitchell trade. The question in when and how the question is when and how much we know, how much we know where he's going. That's the New York Knicks. Kind of a funky way to word it, but he's pretty confident it's going to be with the Knicks. And then Berman. Yeah, here we go. This is what we were talking about before. They're just haggling over unprotected picks. Definitely check out those articles. Now, this was an interesting trade idea that the Mecca, the Mecca MSG on Twitter, this was his reply to this post, this tweet by uh, NBA Trade Report that says, Sources, Lakers interested in joining potential trade between Utah and New York as a third team. LA willing to move first round picks for much needed roster depth. Something to keep an eye on as training camp quickly approaches. Yeah, training camp, I think within a month. I think in a month, in exactly about a month, the training camp uh, will be going. I think in less than a month, actually, right now. So let's look at this trade. Let's look at what this trade actually is going to entail. Let's go to it here. Here we go. All right. So the Knicks end up with what uh, Russell Westbrook and Donovan Mitchell. And of course, that's just a salary dump for the Lakers and the Knicks will just cut Russell Westbrook in this scenario. The Jazz would get Evan Fournier, Cam Reddish, uh, Taylor Horton Tucker, and Miles McBride, Deuce. And they would get the Detroit Pistons first round pick, the Knicks from the Knicks via Detroit. They would get the 2029 first round pick from the Lakers, which would be unprotected. The 2023 first round pick from the Knicks, that's next season's, which will be unprotected. And the 2025 unprotected pick from the Knicks for, and then, oh my God, look at this. Like, what, what, what this is a truckload of picks. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six picks here. And four of them are unprotected. That is a pretty nice haul for Danny Ainge. This would, this would probably make Danny feel like the king again. Like he finally got over on people and uh in this scenario uh i mean if, if he uses those picks correctly that could be a devastating haul for utah which would be a nice i mean you know people got to win trades some people got to you know someone everyone's got to it's got to hurt a little bit so 
The Lakers end up getting uh, Derrick Rose in this scenario, Bojan Bogdanovic, and, ready, Julius Randle. That's right. So this is like the type of trade that I want to see happen. I mean, whether who we can massage it, who exactly, you know, maybe that is, maybe that's those six picks is a little too heavy because we are going to eat some salary, but the Jazz are also going to have to give up uh, Bojan in this scenario as well. I think something like this could work out because here's the beautiful thing about this. The only young player that's leaving the Knicks young core would be Cam Reddish in this scenario. And as much as I believe Cam's ceiling is incredibly high, his floor is kind of low as well, which will brings me back to why Obi Toppin may be the key piece in this whole trade, this, in the current version of the trade discussions right now. I'll get, get to that in a second. But here, we keep Obi, the beauty. We keep Obi and Randall finds a new home in LA. And I think I think this could be a good scenario. This, this, look at those three players that Lakers would be getting. That would immediately boost that, their chances of at least maybe possibly getting back to the Western Conference Finals. Whether that can get you all the way to the finals right now, the West is tough. It all depends on uh, on health, really. It all depends on health for them. And yet it always does anyway. But I think this would probably give them their very best opportunity to get back to the Western Conference Finals. And then you never know, injuries, someone maybe get hot in, the, in that seven game uh, series. And then who knows, Lakers could surprise people and get back into the finals. Unlikely, yeah, but it's possible, possible. And then the Jazz get what they want. Uh, they get a bunch of contracts that they can handle and deal with here. I mean, Cam Reddish is going to be interesting. They're going to be kind of like probably a wait and see, see what you can do this year, and then uh, we'll see what happens next year because he, you know, he'll be eligible for a new contract. Uh, Deuce, we all know what Deuce is about. We love him. Uh, we get to keep Grimes. This is a very interesting scenario here. Very interesting indeed. Okay, let's get back to the situation. So, today it was announced that the Nets and Ken, Kevin Durant have come to an agreement. <laughs> they they made a deal with their own player to just stay. That's it. And uh, as Popper tweeted out here, in case in in a case of the grass is always greener on the other side, the Nets and Kevin Durant realize everyone's lawn is dead now. Yeah. People just don't have enough chips to trade for Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant is he's one of the greatest players of all time. And he's still, Kevin Durant can still be the best team, the best player on a team that wins the championship. That's what we're talking about here. To try and acquire a player like that, it demands such a tremendous haul of actual current players that can contribute, winning players, maybe even all-star level players. And on top of that, uh, you know, gr excellent uh, first round pick assets. That's a tough package to put together to get a player like that. Phoenix has been wanting that. Celtics have been talking about it. Uh, not sure the Heat have, but there's a there's a slew of, t I think even uh, the, there was like a rumor of the Grizzlies getting in there. Uh, I haven't heard much about Golden State getting back in there, but uh, it's hard. It's hard to trade a player of that type of talent and magnitude if other teams just don't have the assets. And that's what it is. The lawn is dead right now. Now, how does this impact everybody else? Well, people were expecting that that would be the first domino, but it's not going to fall. The Nets are going to run it back with Kyrie. Durant, they'll probably get Ben Simmons to play, though I will say this. I am I think it's 50-50 Ben Simmons plays at all this year. I, I just 50-50. Uh Joe Harris is gonna be healthy in the back. Uh now they have they still have Seth Curry from the trade uh with the Sixers. I mean, they have a nice team. They still have Cam Thomas, uh, they got uh, Royce O'Neal. I mean, that team. If, if they play together, that team could go deep. That team could compete. 
for a championship. However, that could be their undoing once again. So we'll see. So they're going to run it back. And honestly, it's the only move there is. It's the only move. You don't fire a bunch of people. You don't make crazy trades. No. This, they're, they're, they're in. They, they, they made their deal with these two, <laughs> these two basketball devils, uh, Durant and, uh, and Kyrie. And now they're going to have to live with it. So I tell you, uh, I think it's a smart move by uh, Joe Sy. I will say that. I will say that for sure. So that means if if people couldn't put together a trade that could even at all come close enough to get Durant, people, that's, people are struggling. People, well, let's put it the other way. Let's flip it around. Teams are struggling to make a trade for Mitchell, Donovan Mitchell, except for the Knicks. How else, how else would other teams make a trade for Kevin Durant? So, of course, he's staying still. Now, since he's staying there, the East stays incredibly competitive uh, with the Sixers, you know, contenders. Celtics, of course, contenders. The Heat, they have, to, they have to be considered contenders. And the Nets, contenders. And then the team, probably, if Middleton is healthy, who could return back to the uh, finals, the Bucks. So, I mean, this is a very competitive, those are five, five strong teams I just laid. I think it was just five, yeah. The Knicks are looking to be that sixth team. They're looking to be that sixth team. So, I, it's, this is going to be a very fascinating basketball season. It feels like I say that every year and it always delivers, always delivers. All right, so here, this is interesting, too. We talked about this before, about how um, Ian Begley reported that some New York decision makers are open to including R.J. Barrett in a trade for Donovan Mitchell. The Jazz continue to have strong interest in New York's wing, R.J. Barrett. Now, he in his article, uh, Ian states, he says, it's, it's worth pointing out that there are several voices of influence in the organization. So it makes sense that there would be a different opinions among decision makers in New York. So it means like, yeah, there may, you might find may, maybe if there's about a total of eight, influ, eight, eight decision makers that have had any kind of influence. Of course, Leon Rose and uh, Dolan are the top two. But in between there, there's going to be people who have different points of view. And I can see, I can see the logic. You're like, hey, you know what? If we throw RJ in there, maybe we only maybe he will take just the two unprotected picks. And then, you know, we can kind of maintain our assets for the next big trade. So I can see that logic, but it's flawed. <laughs> RJ Barrett will be an all-star. There is no doubt in my mind. In fact, RJ Barrett is going to make a leap next season that's gonna shock people. It's gonna. Sh it may not shock us fans who love his game, and we've seen what he can do. You know, we're talking about the the guy. I mean, the, the guy, I think he had 12 30 plus point games last season, uh, the most for anyone under the age of 22, I believe. He's got all star. Now, of course, the big issue with him is efficiency. I think his efficiency is going to go way up, way way up, because there's going to be even though. If Donovan Mitchell comes to the team, or even without him, we got Brunson, Randall, and RJ. Ball dominant. But Brunson is going to really help increase RJ's productivity on this team. Because here's the thing. a lot There were many times where RJ tried to force the issue. Because he didn't see, I mean, there weren't that many opportunities. There weren't that many other playmakers on the court with him. Randall wasn't even a playmaker often. I mean, he... Basically, we just dribble the ball endlessly and then end up with a bad play. And, you know, like the force, the, the unforced turnover kind of situation with him. So RJ at one point, and he wanted to get that his, his uh, point scoring total up to 20 plus. And he did that, but he did sacrifice efficiency for that. No doubt in my mind, he's going to get that efficiency back up. And he will be an all-star type level. He, he might even have an all-star type season next season. May not make it to the all-star game. Because, you know, it's limited. There's only 12 players go any 12 or 15. I can't remember. Go from, from each uh, conference. But he'll have that kind of a, a season next season. 
So giving up on him? No. So brings me back to Obi. But before we get to that, uh, all right, here we go. Brings me back to Obi Toppin. Why Obi? Why not Cam? Why not Grimes? In my opinion, of that group, other than RJ, other than RJ, we're talking about Obi, Cam, Grimes, IQ. Of those four, guarantee, I guarantee you, if you give either one, any of those four guys a starting job in the NBA, of those four, next season, and the season afterwards, and the season after that, Obi Toppin will average 20 plus points. I think he could average 10 rebounds sometimes, but I've been talked down from that. I'll say eight rebounds a game. He could be a 20 and eight guy. I cannot give you a guarantee that IQ would average 20 points a game, would average over a full season if he was a starter. I can't guarantee that. Uh, Cam, I don't know. Cam is such an unknown and he gets injured all the time. So yeah, maybe he does average 20 points, but he only plays 28 games. So, you know, what's the value of that? Then Grimes, can Grimes one day become a 20 point game uh, average guy? I think he can, but is he ready next year? No, it may take him a little time. It may take him a, a couple of years. I'm talking about if he was a starter, if he was a starter. The other beautiful thing about Obi is he, he, can, he scores effortlessly. He makes decisions quickly. Uh, he feeds off other players. And when things break down, he can create. So he makes the most sense. And even Berman said it himself on uh, the same interview on the, with uh, Knicks Fan TV with uh, CP and uh, JD and uh, Alex. He said, Obi is the Knicks best prospect. He said it himself. Now, I don't know if he was also eliminating RJ from that list, but that those were his own words. So that might be the uh, the feeling around the NBA as far as that's concerned. And for Utah, Utah could use a big guy like Obi. So as much as it pains me, because the, 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 sad, the darkest part of all this, the darkest part of all this is that it means we'll be, we'll be stuck with Randall. And if there's anybody who that would hurt the most. <laughs> it's me, just even thinking about it. But that's just the reality of the situation right now. That's why I like that three-team trade. In fact, let's go back and look at it. Where is it? Where is it? There we go. I like something like this. Why can't we make something like this? Come on, LA. Let's make something like this happen. You'll give, uh, I mean, look, you pick Derek, Derek Rose alone. Derek Rose alone could Oh my God, improve that Lakers squad tremendously. Again, health issues. Bojan, one of the best three-point shooters in the game. Julius, one of the best power forwards in the game. I mean, just two seasons ago, second team all NBA. This could be a nice situation here. And then the Lakers could get out from under Russell Westbrook contract because they can't have Russell Westbrook on that team. And it, it does cost them two first rounders, but we're talking about 2027 and 2029. That's, those are years away. They can figure out other ways to recoup a first round pick here and there. And if this team is gonna be as good as it can be, those first round picks are gonna be in the bottom third of the draft lottery. But the Knicks first round picks, based upon history, have a good chance of being much higher value. The unprotected ones I'm talking about. So this is a situation that's happening here. I wanna hear you guys, your thoughts. Please drop your comments, what your feelings about all of this is. I will make a uh, prediction. Uh, I think this deal, this deal happens. This deal, this deal's a, a, a deal, a deal between the Knicks and the Jazz is going to happen before training camp. So we're talking about within the next three and a half weeks. Now it could happen right after Labor Day. Could happen, right? Or, you know, for all we know, we could get a nice Labor Day present. Wouldn't that be nice? All right. So thank you for watching this. Again, my name is George. Oh, follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter. There you go. I can't even point. There you go. <laughs> it is at Nick's first. 
Uh, you can send me DMs there if you have any specific questions. Also, uh, if there's anything you guys would like to see me make a video about, just D, uh, DM me and uh, I really would appreciate it. That'd be great. And uh, we'll just keep this thing going. We'll keep this going until the Knicks get it right. And what I love is Leon is not blowing it yet. <laughs> and maybe he won't. Maybe Leon will hold firm and Danny will come to his senses and he'll realize, you know what? If I can get that third first round pick, I'll do the deal. Where's the, where are the Knicks gonna get that third first round pick? That'll be the trick. Come on, Brock. Come on, Leon. Figure that part out. All right. Thank you. And I'll see you around.